Okay, question four. They want us to solve this differential equation, which is homogeneous, has linear quantum coefficients. That's going to be using auxiliary polynomial method. And then they want us to use various parameters to solve a non-homogeneous version of the same equation. Okay, that's the whole generation parameters thing, which uses the, the solution to the homogeneous version. So first of all, we're going to solve this homogeneous one. So y dash dash plus 2y dash plus y equals 0. So we have y dash dash plus 2y dash plus y equals 0. So the auxiliary polynomial then is lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 1. Um, now, that, does that factorize nicely? Yes, it factorizes as lambda plus 1 times lambda plus 1. So that means that we could have, means that the solution then is, you've got, you know, it's going to have two constants, so it's constant times and then e to the minus 1 times the way the variable is to start make it. Oh, it's x, because in the, in the second equation, we had a e to the minus x on x, so the variable is x, it's not t. So if e to the minus x, and then bx e to the minus x. Okay, that's the homogeneous, that's the solution of the homogeneous system. What was this for a? Okay, now for b, they're giving us, they're making it a non-homogeneous thing. Okay, with putting an e to the minus x sine x instead of zero. So now we have y dash dash plus two y dash oops plus two y dash plus y equals e to the minus x sine x. And we know that the solution, well, will be given by y equals u1 y1 plus u2, y2. That'll be the, uh, not a general solution, the general solution to add the homogeneous thing on, but this'll be the, in fact, this can be the, you know what, this can be the whole solution if you just put constants in for the y1, we'll see. So, what is the u1 and u2? Oh, what is the y1 and even what is the y1? You know what, I'm just gonna write that y1 out. That y1 is actually, it's the, it's the, should I say a e to the, did you say a, no, it's, you just say e to the x, so you don't use the constant there. The constant is going to become, is going to come in the use. Okay. The, okay. So what are the u1 and u2 is given by? They're given by this matrix equation. You take the e to the minus x, and the derivative of that is minus e to the minus x. And you take x e to the minus x, and you know the derivative of that, which is, e to the minus x minus x e to the minus x multiplied by the vector u1 dash u2 dash and you know what yes okay and that must equal zero and then we have um, oh here we have the thing on the right which is e to the minus x sine x divided by divided by the term in front of the y dash dash, which is just 1 in this case, so nothing changes. So now we need to solve this equation for u1 dash and u2 dash. And I think we can probably do it by inspection. You often can. So we want to find u1 dash and u, u2 dash. Okay. So the second row times by the u1 dash and u2 dash, we end up being getting sine x. So there's got to be a factor of sine x in here. In the in the u1 in the u1 dash must have just have a factor of, of must be something like the u1 dash must be some, something like sine x to get us that sine x. No, because the second row because the second row when you times it by that second row when you times it by u1 dash u2 dash, you've got to get that. You just have, and that second row, you just have a, you have the x e to the minus x gets times 
the xe to the minus x gets times by the, the u2 dash, right, in that second row. But you still end up with just e to the minus x sine x. So I think that x has got to be divided away. So I think u2 dash is going to have to have a factor of x to the minus 1 in it. Okay? So that it produces something of the form x to the minus 1 e to the minus x minus e to the minus x. So you just get the e to the minus x. But that means that the, the u1 dash must also have a factor of x to the minus 1 in it. So that it can, it can cancel out with, the, with the, the x to the minus 1 that you get from the e to the minus x. So, so now if we do this multiplication now we'd get second row times the, the second row times the u1 dash u2 dash vector you get let me just write it down roughly you get you get one x to the minus one e to the minus x plus uh, minus of that you get plus x to the minus one e to the minus x those would cancel nicely and you'd also get minus x and x minus one cancel e to the minus x okay actually we want a sine x in there so we if we should put a sine x on which one? In the, the u2. Oh, we definitely need to put the sine x on the u2. Ooh, then we should also put it on the there so that it cancels. It's getting complicated. And we need to change them to minuses because we want to get end up with a plus e to the x sine x. Okay, does that make the top cancel out? No, it doesn't. Hmm. This is getting complicated. I'm not liking it. I think this is one way where it's a bit tricky to do that by inspection, so we're going to have to actually invert that matrix. OK, let's do that. OK, so, oh. so this matrix here that we have, trans value 1, u2 dash, this can be written as, let me just say, this is, this is the same as what, a times u1 dash, in fact, I can just name it, a times u dash equals, as the matrix is, I'm going to factorize out the e to the minus x from every term, and we're left with 1x, oh, that's going to make things nice and easy, actually, maybe we can do it by inspection after all. This thing is the same as factorize out the e to the minus x first, and then you're left with 1 x minus 1, 1 minus x. Looks much nicer to deal with. u1 dash, u, u2 dash. Also, let's factor out the e to the minus x from the other side as well. I have e to the minus x, 0, sine x. In fact, the e to the minus x is superfluous. You can cancel it from both sides, right? Yes. So we're just dealing with this much simpler matrix of 1x minus 1, 1 minus x. And we need to end up with getting a 0 and a sine x. So the u1 and the u2 dash must so the u1 and the u2 dash must end up giving us a sine x with the second row they must give us a sine x and with the top row they must cancel so the fact that they must cancel means that the u1 dash must have an extra factor of x in it compared the u1 dash the u2 dash the u1 dash must have an extra factor of x in it as compared to the u2 dash, so that, and then, which must be negative, so that they cancel out and give you a zero. But then, we, if we did that with the second row with that, we would get, we would get minus x, minus one plus x, which would cancel to give us just minus one. But we don't want minus one, we want sine x. So if we times this whole vector, which was x minus 1. If we times that whole vector by sine x, that should give us, or by minus sine x, actually. But if I'm times by minus sine x, I may as well change these just rather to minus x and 1. This should do it. So now, you times this, times this new one, times this vector. So 1x, the top column will give us like sine x times by minus x plus x, that's just 0. And the bottom column will give us sine x times by x plus 1 minus x, which is just 1, and then times by sine x to sine x. Yeah, that's it. That's what u1 dash u2 dash can be. Okay, so that's u1 dash u2 dash. Then u1 
will be the integral of minus x sine x. Oh, that's not a nice thing to integrate. Integral of minus x sine x. This is going to need parts, I guess. Okay, so we have to do this integration by parts. So we could let u equal x, so that du is dx, and we could let dv be sine x dx, so that v is uh, minus cos x. Y yes. Then that's going to make the whole integral become, ignoring the minus sign for now, become u times v, which is minus x cos x minus v du, which will be plus cos x minus u, minus u dv sine x dx. Ugh. I have to integrate this. So the integral of cos x sine x you could do that with the trig identity or something, right? Um, we know that, what? Cos x sine x, that's, is that, is it that cos x sine x, is it the, I think, yeah, I think it's that, it's that sine of, sine of 2x, so sine of x plus x actually equals cos x sine x plus sine x cos x, so it equals 2 cos x sine x, right? I'm pretty sure that's true. Uh, is that, if you sub zero in there, it works. If you sub um, pi in there, the two pi, you have sine two pi to zero, sine of pi is also zero. Um, so what about if you sub pi over two in? So sine of, no, that's, that's still zero again. Ah, yes, that's an interesting one. Sine of two times pi over two, so you have sine of so then you end up with sine of pi on the left-hand side, which is 0. The right-hand side, you have cos of pi over 2 and sine of pi over 2. The sine of pi over 2 is not 0, but the cos of pi over 2 now is 0. So it still makes it 0. If, for example, you have pi over 4, then we're going to have 2 times pi over 4 on the left-hand side, which is pi over 2. So we have sine of pi over 2, which is, what, 1. On the right-hand side, we have cos of pi over 4, sine of pi over 4. They are both 1 over the square root of 2. So you have 2, two times 1 over the square root of 2 times 1 over the square root of 2. So you have 2 over 2, so it's 1. So they work out. Yes, so this, I'm pretty sure this identity then is correct. So this integral then would become the integral of cos x sine x is actually just half times the integral of sine 2x, which is then half times, now we have a minus cos, minus cos 2x, but when you integrate it, you bring the thing, so you need a extra minus quarter there. Okay, so this whole thing will come to this, this minus that makes this thing to x cos x. And then there's a minus in front of this integral of cos x sine x. But we worked out the integral of cos x sine x is actually minus quarter cos 2x. So this becomes plus a quarter cos 2x. Okay, this was all rough work. We don't need it anymore. Th this course isn't about finding integrals, so I guess you're not gonna you're not gonna get marks for integrating. Okay, I thought u one is okay plus a constant. I'll call the constant a. You know what? I should call the constant c one. Okay, because it goes to u one. Um, now u two. I really hope u2 is nicer to integrate. Yes, it definitely is. Uh, u2, then, is the integral of sine x, which is just minus cos x. So we have minus cos x plus then the other constant. OK, so now we're going to sub this into this equation at the top there. y equals u1 e to the minus x. So that means that y equals Um, x e to the x cos x sorry it's e to the minus x right e to the minus x cos x it's e to the minus x and it's x e to the minus x cos x plus a quarter e to the minus x oh, I'm going to need more space for this I'll put on a new page okay 
So y then y was u1 e to the minus x plus u2 x e to the minus x, right? Okay. U1, sub these in, uh, you can get x e to the minus x cos x plus a quarter e to the minus x cos 2x plus c1 e to the minus x and then the u2 is minus cos x plus c2 so you have minus cos oh no nope, minus x times cos x e to the minus x plus c2 times x e to the minus x okay now can this be simplified a little bit some terms collected we have ah, I wrote this in a funny way you rather put this as e to the minus x. What was it? It was e to the minus x cos x. Okay. So now those two terms cancel out, right? Yeah. There's two x e to the x terms, cos x terms, so they cancel out. Or anything else cancel? No, it's not a cancellation. So we just have quarter e to the minus x cos 2x plus, as we expected, c1 e to the minus x plus c2 x e to the minus x, the homogeneous part. So the only new bit we found is that this, this, uh, this uh, particular solution, this single solution to the, to the non-homogeneous system. And so that's a thing we should check. So we check it by, by taking, look, so if, if y equals a quarter e to the minus x cos 2x, then y dash equals, oh, not nice integration, equals minus a quarter e to the minus x cos 2x, um, then integral of de derivative of cos 2x is minus sign, minus a quarter, oh, minus two sign, so we end up with minus a half e to the minus x cos sine, sorry, sine 2x. Um, that is actually just minus y minus a half e to the minus x sine 2x then that means the y dash dash will be equal to minus y dash and now we have to differentiate this extra term uh, so you have minus you have did I bring to the minus down? I did yes you have plus a half e to the minus x sine 2x and then you have so derivative of sine is cos, so you have minus a half e to the minus x cos x, and that is actually minus y dash plus, so this minus a half e to the minus x cos x, that's actually 2y, so it's minus 2y, and then we have the extra plus a half e to the minus x sine 2x. Now these are all going to go together into the differential equation, which was the original differentiation was, look at it actually in the original form, was y dash dash plus 2y dash plus y equals e to the minus x sine x. So, based on what we found for y, y dash and y dash dash, we have y dash dash plus 2y dash plus y equals, what equals minus y dash minus 2y plus, ah, let's call this thing a because it's the same as that thing. Yeah, okay, plus a, plus 2 times y dash, but y dash is minus y minus a, the a, that a thing. So we yeah, end with minus 2a, this a, yeah, minus, do you know what, I'm going to call this thing half a. Ooh, and I can see the problem. We're going to get sine 2x instead of sine x on the right. I wonder how that happened. 
where did this extra 2 end up coming from? Maybe the 2 came from the trig identity we used. It really, is, it's just it's just sine x on the right, isn't it? Not sine 2x. Six sine x. Right, let's just see what happens. So I'm calling that thing half a. Uh, so we have... Uh, so y dash dash was minus y dash minus 2y. I'm not calling it half a. I'm not going to call it anything. This is confusing me. Plus half e to the minus x sine 2x. And then the next bit's the 2y dash term. That's minus y... Oh, sorry, it's minus 2y minus e to the minus x sine 2x. And the y is just... Oh, we can just call that y plus y. So what this whole thing comes to... To what? It comes to minus y dash minus 4y plus y hmm this is not looking good I think it was foolish of me to to write these derivatives in terms of the functions I think that's one mistake I made didn't make things, didn't actually make, I thought it made things easier, it didn't. So, so I have this expression now for y dash, I just need, now I just need to get expression for y dash dash. So that's what y dash is. So y dash dash is, no, but that's so much integration to do. So much, I mean, so much differentiation to do. Well, let's just do it. So you get my, oh, you get a quarter e to the minus x cos two x plus a half e to the minus x sine two x. Um, plus a half e to the minus x sine 2x minus a half e to the minus x cos 2x, which is actually just a quarter minus a half is minus a quarter, so minus a quarter e to the minus x cos 2x, and half plus a half is 1 plus e to the minus x sine 2x. So then when you were going to, the equation was y dash dash plus 2y dash plus y on the left. So we have y dash dash plus things up by 2 plus y. So we times this, this thing but remember by 2 we have instead of minus quarter we become minus a half. Instead of minus a half it becomes minus 1. Now if we add all, yeah, just add these up, add these up, you get what? To add those all up, you get, so the, let's do the e to the minus x cos 2x terms first. You get a quarter, a quarter plus minus a quarter, so that goes away, and then you have left over minus a half e to the minus x cos 2x. And then the sine e to the minus x sine 2x terms, you have e to the minus x sine 2x there, and a plus, so they just go away. So you just end up with minus half e to the minus x cos 2x. Okay, now apparently that's meant to equal e to the minus x sine x. And it definitely won't, right? Because they have different periods. So there's some problem here. Where's the problem? 
It's not nice that we have kind of cos 2x. Where did that come from? It came from doing this integration by parts. Quarter cos 2x. Probably made a mistake there. Yet the u1 dash and the u2 dash, those are fine, I checked them. But the u1, we integrate that x sine x. Do we, do we really get what I said we got? Let me check by differentiating that, that thing, what I said for u1. So based on what I've said, for what u1 is, u1 dash will be cos x minus x sine x plus half sorry, oh, minus a half sine 2x. Okay, but that's definitely not minus x sine x. So we made a mistake in the integration by parts. Ugh. Okay, so we need to fix that. So this is wrong here. Let's try and do that integration by parts again. Okay, the x sine x, we want to integrate it. So we take, and that can be more carefully, you have minus x times sine x there. So we have, let's have u equal minus x, and dv equals sine x dx. Okay, that means that du will be minus dx, and v will be minus... Ah, that actually means it's nicer to think of this as x, ugh, as x, sorry. Nicer to think of this as x times minus sine x. That makes things work out quite nicely. frozen. Okay, so we let u equal x, dv equal minus sine x dx, and that means that du will be dx and v will be cos x. So that means the integral of that is going to be uv minus v du. So uv is x. Hmm. What's wrong with my pen? Maybe the battery's running out. Why is it not writing? So uv is x cos x. X cos X UV minus V DU. So that's V V DU. So it's UV minus V DU, right? Yes. Uh, so V DU is gonna go be V is cos X and DU is DX. Okay, the integral of, oh, this is different from what we had last time, isn't it? I did UDV, ugh, I did VDV or something like that. So then we, this becomes x cos x, so minus cos x is the integral of, this is the integral of sine x. So this actually is x cos x plus sine x. Okay. But let's check that. U1 dash would then be, if this was what U1 is, U, if, if U1 was that, then U1 dash would be cos x minus x sine x plus cos x derivative, derivative of derivative of cos x, then you get 
minus x sine x, and you get plus cos x. No, I don't want that. I want that cos x, that cos x to cancel out. Well, how can that cos x cancel out? The derivative of cos x is minus sine x. The derivative of sine x is cos x. I'd rather this was minus sine x. That was minus sine x. Then we'd have, here we'd end up with the derivative of sine x is minus cos x. The derivative of, sorry, derivative of minus sine x is minus cos x, and they cancel. I don't know what other mistake I made, but now I have something that works, right? If you want, if you want dash, if you want is x cos x minus sine x, and you want dash is just cos x minus x sine x minus cos x. Cos x is cancelled out. Cool. So that plus c1. So let's fix the rest of this. Ah, this is all wrong. Let me just delete it and do things on a new page. Okay, so that's what u1 and u2 are. So we said that y will be u1, y will be u1 e to the minus x plus u2 x e to the minus x. So y is u1 e to the minus x plus u2 e x e to the minus x. U1 was is x cos x, so, if, so we have so we have x e to the minus x cos x minus e to the minus x sine x plus c1 e to the minus x and then we have plus well it's actually a minus cos x so minus x e to the minus x cos x cos x and plus c2 x e to the minus x so does it simplify at all um, yes, the x e to the minus x terms say nicely cancel out, and we're left with minus e to the minus x sine x plus c1 e to the minus x plus c2 x e to the minus x. Okay, and that's our final solution. We have the homogeneous part as we would expect, and we have this particular solution minus e to the minus x sine x. That bit's new, we should check it. So if we just have y equals, no, I'm just not gonna bo not bother with the homogeneous solution because you already know that, that bit's right. We just have that, then we know that y dash will be what? Will be e to the minus x sine x, and then minus e to the minus x cos x. And so y dash dash will be yeah, will be minus e to the minus x sine x plus e to the minus x cos x minus, oh, no. Then you have, the second time you have to get plus e to the minus x cos x and then you'll get minus, cos x, derivative of cos x is, is minus sine x, so you have plus e to the minus x sine x. So in total you have you have what do you have? E to the minus the, the sine x terms cancel and you're left with just two e to the minus x cos x. Now the actual differential equation was y dash dash plus two y dash plus y equals whatever. So you have y dash dash, so we need to plus y dash dash plus 2y dash, so this is plus y. So we need actually 2 e to the minus x minus 2 there, okay. Now if we add these all up, the things nicely cancel, we will end up adding them all up, we will end up with, so it looks at the sine x terms first. So we have minus, we have sine x terms, for the sine x terms we have minus 1 plus 2 
that's it, yay. So we have e to the minus x sine x as we expected, we hope to get from the right side. Now for the cos x terms, you have minus two e to the minus x cos x and two e to the minus x cos x, yes, they cancel out. And we get e to the minus x sine x on the right. Right, yes, okay. So this is all rough work, just checking that our solution worked. So we don't need that, and this is our final answer then. We, for 4b, you write on, you check, make that write on the matrix thing, uh, you, in this case, it's got to simply factorize out the e to the minus x, and then we inspected it and figured out what the, the actual u1 dash u2 dash factor was, then we integrated, and then plugged it into the formula and simplified. That's it.